Hi, everyone. My apologies. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, this is the Baltimore City Council Ways and Means Committee. Hearing is now called to order. Uh, today, we're here for one matter, City Council Bill 21-0007, COVID-19 Restaurant, Consumer, and Gig Worker Relief Act, uh, temporary limit on third-party delivery uh, service fees. For the purpose of establishing certain temporary regulations on third-party food delivery platforms, defining certain terms, authorizing the Director of Finance to adopt rules and regulations to implement and enforce this subtitle, setting forth certain prohibited conduct for third-party food delivery platforms, providing for enforcement by citation, providing for certain criminal and administrative penalties, providing for this ordinance's severability, setting forth a certain termination date, providing for a special effective date, and generally relating to the regulation of third-party food delivery platforms and the economic well-being of Baltimore restaurants, consumers, and gig workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Councilman Eric Costello from the 11th District, Chair of the Committee. Uh, joining me today is, I believe we have Council President Nick Mosby, or he will be hopping on shortly. Uh, members of the committee, uh, we have Councilwoman Danny McRae from the 2nd District, Councilman Ryan Dorsey from the 3rd District, Council Vice President Sharon Green Middleton from the 6th District, Councilman Isaac Gitsy Schleifer from the 5th District, Councilman Chris Burnett from the 8th District, and Councilman Robert Stokes from the 12th District. I believe that is all the members of the Council who have joined us today. Uh, on I think Councilman Glover is on also. I don't know if you see him. Uh, yes, Councilman Antonio Glover from the 13th District. Councilman, my apologies. Um, on behalf of Mayor Brandon Scott, uh, we have Nina Themlis uh, from the Office of Government Relations. And on behalf of Council President Nick Mosby, we have Matt Stegman uh, and Nikki Thompson. Uh, in addition, staff to the committee is Marguerite Curran. Uh, she is the person who makes sure all the trains run on time. A couple quick ground rules uh, before we get started. Uh, please stay muted until you're recognized by the chair. Uh, when you're not speaking, please be sure to mute yourself. When you are called on, please be sure to identify yourself as well as what agency you're with and what your position is. Please speak slowly and clearly. Uh, after you are finished speaking, again, please mute yourself uh, until you're recognized by the chair. Uh, and we are asking that committee members and city agency officials are expected to keep video on for the duration of the hearing, unless there are technical issues preventing you from do, doing so. Uh, so in the spirit of transparency, we wanna make sure that uh, everyone that is from the public uh, who is speaking to us uh, knows that we're listening uh, and paying attention. Uh, very quickly, I want to go through the format of the hearing. Um, we've already done introduction and ground rules. Uh, we're going to have uh, brief introductory uh, remarks uh, from the sponsor of the bill. Uh, in this case, it's myself and Council President Mosby, along with a number of our other colleagues. We will then go into city agency reports. Uh, as is customary for these committee hearings, uh, I will call on the agency. Uh, basically state what their position is, whether they oppose or support or have not taken a position, uh, and ask them if they wanna take the opportunity to add anything. I will note that we have agency comment reports uh, from each of the agencies uh, that have been asked to comment on this legislation. That should have been provided to you uh, electronically uh, by Marguerite Curran, again, who's staffed to the committee. Once we get through uh, the agencies, uh, we will then go to questions or comments from uh, council members. Uh, we will then take public testimony. And finally, uh, we'll entertain a motion on the bill. Uh, before we begin, uh, council members, are there any questions on the ground rules uh, or the hearing format for today? Okay, seeing that there are none, uh, I will jump in and provide a brief introduction of what this legislation does. Uh, it does a few things. Uh, first, it temporarily limits how much uh, third-party delivery apps uh, like DoorDash or Grubhub or Uber Eats 
uh, can charge our local restaurants. Essentially puts a 15% uh, aggregate cap on that. Uh, number two, it allows our local restaurants to keep a greater share of the takeout order bill uh, to pay costs of uh, operating their business and most importantly, paying their workers who in many cases are Baltimore city residents. And third, it protects uh, delivery drivers or our gig workers who in many cases are Baltimore city residents uh, from the apps passing a loss of profits uh, on to them. Uh, and number four, finally, uh, this legislation, uh, if uh, enacted, would expire uh, 90 days after Governor Hogan lifts the state of emergency in Maryland. Uh, so it is directly tied to the pandemic. Uh, very quickly, I, I wanna touch on a couple of things that the legislation does not do. Uh, one, it does not cut how much uh, our delivery drivers or gig workers can earn. Uh, number two, uh, it does cap how much drivers can collect, or it does not cap, pardon me, how much drivers can collect in tips from consumers. And number three, it does not increase costs uh, to our consumers who are supporting our local restaurants and ordering uh, takeout. Um, I don't think that Council President Mosby has joined us yet, uh, but I do wanna sincerely thank him for his support on this bill uh, and specifically his leadership, uh, not only with making sure we find or we found a creative solution uh, to ensure that our gig workers slash delivery drivers are protected, uh, but also so that we could get on an expedited time frame uh, to have this bill potentially enacted. I would also like to thank uh, Mayor Scott uh, for his support uh, and committing to signing this bill uh, as soon as it gets to his desk. Uh, so with that, we'll get started. Uh, we're gonna kick things off with the law department. Uh, who do we have? Elena, I believe. Uh, Elena, my understanding is that the law department has approved this bill for form and legal sufficiency. Uh, is that the case? Elena? Sorry, I thought I had unmuted. Um, the law department does approve the bill for form and legal sufficiency, yes. Thank you. Anything to add? No, it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Department of Finance. Good morning. This is Mara James representing the Department of Finance. Um, Department of Finance stands by our report. We do not approve this legislation. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Health Department. No position going to finance. DePaul? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. DePaul Nibber on behalf of the Baltimore City Health Department. Um, we don't see any direct impacts to our operations, nor do we see any direct uh, public health implications to this bill. And so we take no position and defer to the Department of Finance. Thank you. Baltimore Development Corporation, uh, you are favorable. Uh, good morning, Mr. Cal, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, Baltimore Development Corporation stands by its response, which is in support of the legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, give me one second, please. I'm not sure if we have uh, anyone from downtown partnership of Baltimore, uh, which is essentially, essentially quasi governmental. Well, it's not quasi governmental, but it is established uh, through uh, through ordinance. Um, but Downtown Partnership uh, did have this bill referred to them for comment, uh, and they did provide a letter of support um, saying, first and foremost, Downtown Partnership of Baltimore is supportive of this bill. Uh, we will, we believe it will produce a positive impact, and they asked for a expedited time frame for enactment, which we already did discuss. Now, before we get into questions, I do want to take a moment to thank uh, Tony DeFranco from the Department of Legislative uh, Reference uh, for all of his hard work on, on this bill uh, and helping us to make this a reality. So with that, I will now open up the floor to questions from council members for our city agencies. Uh, actually, uh, pardon me for one second. Can you elevate uh, Claudia Jolin?
Uh, we have Claudia Jolin from Downtown Partnership of Baltimore, who is Vice President of Economic Development. Uh, Claudia, is there anything you'd like to share? Good morning, Councilman. We stand by our letter as well and are really in support of this and are excited to see it come through. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, so colleagues, uh, with that, I'll now open up the floor to questions of our city agencies. Council Vice President Middleton, followed uh, by Council Member Burnett. Just um, more of a comment to me. Uh, thank you, um, Councilman Costello, for introducing this bill. Um, just uh, to reiterate how important small businesses are for our city. And with this uh, pandemic and all of the just the total emergency situation through out the different forms of government and our country. We we really have to pay attention to um, our businesses. So I thank everybody for working with you to get this um, in motion. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, Councilman Burnett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'm not sure if this question uh, should go to finance or to you as the bill sponsor, um, but it's uh, in, the, in the finance finance agency report, uh, they raised concerns about enforceability uh, and the mechanism for doing so. Um, could, could anyone expound on uh, if if this isn't implemented by a particular business as a, a business, um, how uh, customers can report uh, that they were charged excess of the fees outlined in the, in the code here. Uh, Mara, I'm gonna turn to you first. Um, thank you for the question. Um, I might actually refer to, you know, if I'm the mayor's office, this is a conversation that we are having um, to finalize what the um, enactment process will be and are trying to get those details figured out. Across agencies, but I'll refer to the mayor. Thanks. Hi, Mayor's office. Um, we're currently talking about what the enforcement mechanism would be, but as we've seen in other jurisdictions, there haven't been a lot of issues raised with uh, enforceability or enforcement. Period. So we're working with finance and with um, all of the agencies involved to determine which agency would be responsible for enforcement, but that hasn't been finalized at this point. Uh, just to add to that, um, thank you, uh, Nina and Amara, uh, Councilman Burnett. What we've seen in, in most major U.S. cities um, is, is one, uh, the third-party apps were aware of, of the fact that this was coming down the pike, right? Um, at least in Baltimore City, um, they've known about it since we uh, did a press conference back in, in late December. Uh, we have, uh, through the president's office, had conversations uh, with a number of uh, the major players, uh, if you will. Uh, the second thing that we've seen is that um, these third-party delivery apps um, have been um, you know, good partners after the fact, after legislation has passed uh, in other cities. Um, but we could certainly, um, you know, once the administration uh, figures this out and, you know, they've got the next two weeks uh, to do that, I'm very confident that they will figure that out based on some preliminary conversations I've had with Nina and her team, um, we could consider um, additional mechanisms such as, uh, you know, a 311 category, um, as well as uh, posting information on uh, the city's website. That's all I have, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Uh, Count Councilman Stokes and then Councilman Dorsey, I saw his hand next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I want to thank you. I think this is a great bill with this um, pandemic that's going on and our restaurants not fully open, not open at all. This really lends a hand. My question is, when the Uber, I'm just using Uber, do the delivery, with this bill where it in their billing system show that it, it only can be 15% instead of 30 instead of having to call 311, is that a way something you can work out? With the business, I don't know how that work. Meaning that if they deliver the food, it'll only allow them to um, charge the fifteen percent instead of the thirty percent. And I, I'm going to take the first shot at answering that, and then I'm going to ask uh, 
Nikki Thompson, who's legislative director for Council President Mosby, to, to chime in if she wants to add anything, because we've been kind of tag teaming the, these meetings with the uh, third party operators. Uh, but our under my understanding is that uh, these operators are able to uh, modify their system based on location and put in the system that, you know, instead of charging 29, 30, 31%, that there is now a set cap of 10% plus the 5% additional fee. And, and for the sake of simplicity, we'll, we'll call it a 15% fee uh, so that they're able to program that into their system. And that's what they've done uh, in other uh, municipalities. Uh, Nikki, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? I'll just add that um, it can be, be drilled down even further to the point of if there are inconsistencies in within the state and the city. So in Portland specifically, they have a 10% cap, but the state of Oregon has a 15% cap and they are able to abide by Portland's 10% cap and still do the 15% within the rest of the state. So it's pretty nuanced. They definitely have those capabilities. Thank you, Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in Section 21.6 of the bill, uh, number six, uh, it prohibits the reduction of compensation rates to the third party delivery service driver or to garnish gratuities as a result of any fee limitations instituted by the section. You mentioned this in uh, kind of introducing the bill. Um, and I appreciate that, uh, that protection being put into the bill. Um, have you, in looking at any other similar uh, legislation, found any bill that anything that any place that combines what this bill does specifically to protect restaurants um, combines that also with um, ensuring that drivers are being paid more or being paid uh, better than what they might pay? Not just not just protecting, protecting them, them from, from having, having their rates, rates reduced, reduced, but actually, but actually increasing, increasing their, their rates. rates. Uh, Councilman, I have not, and again, I wanna open it up uh, to uh, Nikki, as well as Tony DeFranco from Legislative Reference, um, because they, they were partners in this on, on the research, but I have not seen that tied uh, directly together it has been more of a ensuring a, a net neutral uh, outcome, if you will. Uh, Nikki or Tony? And I'll say also, Mr. Chair, that um, I mean, I'm separately working on a bill to do specifically that. And um, because the drivers are also being impacted, uh, the more and more people who are out of work and resorting to driving delivery. Uh, the more flooded that uh, market of workers is, the, the more and more their rates have plummeted. I have a constituent who's contacting me on a weekly basis, sending me screenshots from Grubhub. Uh, he sent me one last week that, um, that would have involved driving 14 miles from where he was to where he was picking up to where he was dropping off and the offer was to be paid three dollars to do that you would get the 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 federal reimbursement standard just for the mileage on the vehicle would be more than four dollars and they were offering to pay three dollars for his time and all of that um so drivers are really being the these are the gig workers i'm thinking of who are really being adversely uh, adversely impacted really isn't the 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 right word i think it's being taken advantage of in their position of need and um desperation resorting to this work um and so what i want to make sure is that as we're looking to protect restaurants that we are not also 
setting ourselves up in a way that conflicts with our ability to help out the drivers, which are kind of like the other side of this same coin. Um, so I, I just hopefully hope we can keep that in mind because that is something um, we're working on getting ready ASAP. Well, Councilman, your your point is uh, well received and duly noted. Um, I, I think the, the key thing here in this legislation is that this is intended to be temporary. Um, and that's part of the reason why it, it's so closely tied to uh, the impacts of COVID-19 on our, our restaurant community. Um, and it, you know, part of the reason why it expires 90 days after the governor lifts the state of emergency. Um, as part of that, um, I, you know, I, I agree with the, the council president here that it's critical that we ensure that, you know, no additional harm uh, is done to those folks. I think that, you know, what, what you're working on, um, uh, while, you know, I haven't, I haven't delved into that issue as, as much as you have, I think that that may be a little bit outside of the scope of, of this bill. And I, I would say that the, speaking for the council president and myself, I think we're both comfortable um, that this is the appropriate level of, of protection for a, a temporary bill. And that's not to say, that, that's not to comment on uh, the need for, for the legislation that you're considering, if, if that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman McRae. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think that this is a timely bill. I do have one question. Do we know how many third party delivery service operators there are or that are operating within Baltimore City at this time? I, I do not. Um, I know of the major ones that are operating um, and we know of a few smaller uh, one off operations. Uh, Department of Finance, uh, do you have any info on that or BDC? Uh, no, I would say we have the, know of the major ones, but they don't um, have to register with Department of Finance for business purposes or anything. Yeah, BDC uh, is the same. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, any other questions? I think we went through everyone on the committee except for Councilman Schleifer. Did you have anything? Okay. Good, thank you. I did want to have, I did have a note for Council Member McRae's question. Um, we do know that there are reported 3,000 drivers in Baltimore City. So that's not exactly your question, but I hope that does give you a range of the amount of people that we are, we're talking about possibly affected in some way. Thank you, Nikki. Okay, going one last time, colleagues, any other questions before we jump into public testimony? Okay, uh, so we're now gonna take testimony from the public. Uh, for those who have signed in using a computer, uh, please use the raise hand function to indicate that you wish to testify. We're going to start with those folks. Uh, after we get through everyone who is who has joined us uh, via the WebEx platform, uh, we will then go to uh, folks who have called in uh, using a, a cell phone or a landline. Uh, so let's start with the folks who have the raise hand function. Uh, and a couple quick things. Uh, members of the public will be limited to two minutes to testify. Um, if any speaker is inaudible, uh, we're gonna uh, come back to you uh, and hope we can get those tech issues uh, resolved. Uh, Marguerite, if you could start it off. With... Okay, we have nobody who has raised their hand to testify who is participating on the WebEx platform. Nobody, I just wanna, I got you, no, no Collins either. I, I'm just, okay, we got someone who raised their hand. Hi, how are you? 
Good. If you could please uh, state your name and if you're with a specific organization. Yes, um, my name is Alice Vasily and I'm the owner of the Cardinal Tavern in Canton. Hi, Alice. How are you? Good, good. Uh, thank you for joining us. Please take it away. Um, so I apologize. I tuned in a little bit late and um, I heard I've been here for about 10 minutes. Um, can you please let me know what the beginning of the conversation was? I apologize. I missed it. Um, so we gave a brief overview of the bill. Uh, then we um, asked each of our city agencies um, who, um, you know, have any relevance to this uh, to comment uh, whether or not they support uh, or oppose the bill. Uh, all of our city agencies are either in support or have uh, taken a position, have taken no position uh, on the matter. Uh, we then got into questions from members of the uh, committee uh, of those city agencies. And now we have moved on to public testimony and you are the first person. Yes, so in support of what? In support of charging the restaurants more or Uber or the um, the delivery companies charging less for the restaurants? So let me give you a, a brief overview of what the bill does. It Thank put, you, I apologize, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Uh, we're putting a temporary limit on how much third party apps can charge restaurants like yours. Okay. Uh, Right now, in many cases, they charge 29, 30, 31%. Uh, we are putting an aggregate cap of 15% uh, on what they can charge you. Um, we are hoping uh, that this will allow you to keep a greater share of the takeout order uh, to be able to cover uh, your operating expenses, including most importantly, uh, paying your employees. Uh, this bill also protects uh, delivery drivers or gig workers uh, from app passing on uh, a loss of profits to them uh, and negatively impacting their pay. Uh, what does the legislation not do? Uh, it doesn't cut how much delivery drivers earn. It doesn't cap how much uh, delivery drivers can collect in tips. Uh, it doesn't increase costs uh, to either restaurants or uh, residents of Baltimore City who are ordering takeout. Okay, so it's, uh, I understand now. Thank you very much. No problem. Do you, is that conclude your public testimony, ma'am? Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. We're going to jump back over to Councilman Schleifer for a moment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a, a constituent in, um, in the industry who just texted me a question. I guess this is being aired somewhere where they can see it. Um, they said the um, their services that they use for their restaurant charges fixed rates. And so they charge a set dollar amount per order uh, plus a delivery fee uh, with a minimum order delivery. So they want to know if um, the percentage just happens to come out. So the order minimum in this example is $20. Um, and then the, the order cost is $1.80 plus 350 for the delivery. And so they want to know if the order is $20. Um, clearly the total comes to above 15%. Uh, how does that work in a situation like that? You're on mute, uh, Chairman. Councilman, can you run through that scenario once more again? Thank so they said the minimum order delivery for the service that they use, and they didn't say the company, so I'm not sure which one it is, but is $20 for the, for the delivery, uh, a $20 minimum. The charge, they charge $1.80 um, to the restaurant for accepting the order. And then they charge $3.50 for the delivery. And so that's without any tip or anything. Those are just the raw costs um, that the restaurant has to pay. Um, it's not clear what they're charging the customer. Um, so in that situation, if, if you go ahead and place a $20 order uh, for your dinner, uh, and you're paying 180 and 350, or even the 180. I mean, you're paying above that 15%. So they just want to know how that works when it comes to fixed costs rather than a percentage of the order. I'm going to ask Tony or Nikki to to chime in here, and correct me if I got this wrong. Um, but I believe that the, first, the bill doesn't expressly speak to an actual 
fixed fee as opposed to a percentage of the total order. And number two, the only limitation that the bill includes is a um, set percentage of the total cost of the order. Nikki, Tony, did I, you wanna clarify, did I get that right? I also have a question um, because I'm wondering, because we, when, we, when we drafted this bill, we tried to consider both business models that are with two of the major third party apps. So it sounds like unless they're it might they might be using a model that just isn't pervasive because a twenty dollar minimum um, stands out as something that we generally have not discussed or seen with some of the third party app groups that have come to us and talked about their structures. So um, we've tried to include language that is vast enough to include all different types of fees to address various different situations. But we're also wanting to make sure that we allow for basically the market to play its role of regulating some of these more particular instances that we just can't possibly legislate for every single particular situation. So that sounds like that might be a particular um, arrangement that we just didn't have the ability to walk through because it wasn't one that was brought up by one of our major third party apps, if that makes sense. But I, I still think that it should, a vendor and or a third party app should be able to set up a structure that complies with what we're setting for with that type of setup. Again, on, on that note, uh, Chairman, is, is this based off, does this include um, a delivery fee, or is this strictly the percentage of the goods the restaurant is selling? That would be the latter. Of the goods. T uh, Tony DeFranco. Um, I, I think um, Council Member Schleifer is referring to the Slice app, which is only uh, applicable to pizza companies, and they do have the model that charges a set fee per order. Regardless, I still think that would be covered under 2163 of the language of the bill, which prohibits any combination of charges that the delivery app charges the restaurant that exceeds 15% of the food sold. So it's the food, not necessarily the specific delivery fee component to it. Uh, no, it includes delivery fees. So, okay, so to clarify then, if if I wanted to order something from a, um, a restaurant downtown and they were going to bring it all the way up to the 5th District, if they said, well, we, you know, we're not delivering from downtown up to the 5th District for, you know, a couple bucks, um, it needs to be a $10 delivery fee. So you're saying, including the delivery fee, um, that has to be part of the percentage. So they have to deliver it for under 15% of the total order for order $20 worth of food. They can't charge more than $3 for that. That's correct, under the language of the bill. So then wouldn't that, um, wouldn't that prohibit uh, restaurants from being able to service people who are outside of their immediate area, which is the reason why most most restaurants use a third party app because they don't have enough in house people to handle the the deliveries and that kind of stuff, which is why they're using these services. So if we're going outside a uh, you know one mile, three mile encashment, um, where there has to be an additional fee for distance that would prohibit that order from being able to be placed. Is that what you're saying? Uh, if the, if the, the restaurant has some sort of model where they're charging folks more, the further the, the driver has to go from, I guess, the pickup point, yeah. then theoretically you're correct. I, I'm not an expert in all this, so uh, I can't speak to the, like Nikki said, I can't speak to sort of all the individual kind of models. Right. 
I will say this particular, to your particular point, though, council member, that um, additional fee for delivery, it's from how you're describing it would fall under the language that we included for the 5% for if you're wanting to get additional advertising, if that per there's flexibility provided there for fees that are not necessarily defined as a delivery fee. So if it's a model that's allowing for or charging for some type of additional fee for driving, et cetera, et cetera, then it would fall under that particular part of, of the bill from how you're describing it right now. Obviously there are additional nuances that could possibly take place, but just from what you're describing, that would fall under that language from how I've interpreted it so far. Gotcha. So that seems to me that it, it could actually play into one of the points that Councilman Dorsey had brought up regarding a driver having to drive a distance and not being able to be and not being compensated uh, proportionate to the distance in which they're driving. Okay. That ends well, to that answer. point, I will say um, that a lot of, of the third party apps actually allow the driver the ability to decline a particular delivery. So if they are in that position, obviously it's definitely, we can definitely talk about providing more protections there, but in those particular instances where it doesn't behoove the driver, driver with certain third party apps, they do allow for the ability to decline. But as um, Council Member Dorsey mentioned earlier, there's a lot more that could be done in that space. So I um, look forward to discussing that further um, with Council Member and with Chairman. I will relay the follow up. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, I don't believe we have any other uh, hands raised through WebEx or Collins by phone. Um, I'm going to do one last call for that. Is there anyone else on the WebEx platform who has a question? And Marguerite, we still have no no one on the phone. Okay. Um, with that, is there a motion to move the bill favorably? I move the bill favorably, move. sir. Chair. Second. All right, I had, I think I had three people at once. I'm gonna give the motion to Dorsey and the second to Stokes. And, uh, So motion by Dorsey, second by Stokes. Uh, Costello is a yes. McCray? Yes. Dorsey? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I just want to note again that um, I uh, look forward to pursuing kind of the other side of this coin, uh, really protecting and bolstering uh, the pay that drivers should be due um, you know, Nick, you mentioned, you know, that they do have the option to uh, decline an offer. The problem is that somebody else will not decline that offer and somebody else's position of need will be exploited by these apps and they will work for far less than what we expect people to be paid even uh, at a minimum wage. And you know, this is exactly why we have minimum wage laws. Um, as to not exploit people in uh, in positions of desperation and need. Um, and so I just want to make sure that uh, everybody else is thinking about this as well um, and that we are cognizant of the, that as we go forward. Um, and so I'm glad to support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for putting it forth. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Schleifer? Schleifer? Yes. Uh, Middleton? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Stokes? Yes. Thank you. This bill passes uh, with seven yes votes, uh, seven zero. And this will move to second reader on Monday, January 25th at 5 p.m or the next meeting of the city council should one be scheduled prior to January 25th at 5 p.m. Uh, thank you all, we're now in recess.